We want to welcome all of His Glory Nation from east to west to north to south. We want to wish you a special Shabbat Shalom. Today is the Sabbath all over the world. Uh, today is Saturday on the Gregorian calendar, the 50th Jubilee, 50th Jubilee year of the Lord. Year 5,777, the year of the sword, the year of the, war, the, year of the word. God's, uh, and God's word is the sword. The sword is the living word. And that's what we're going to be talking about, a quick nugget about his glory today. And we pray that the Holy Spirit will come down to give true wisdom. Because the world is being, um, being tricked exactly the way Jesus said it would be in the end days. Exactly the way the prophet Isaiah said in the Gospels, uh, the Gospel of Mark and uh, Mark 7, the people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. As uh, Jesus is quoting Isaiah, they honor them with his lips, but their heart is, is, is far from me. They'll go through the outwardly traditions of what they call a religion instead of having a relationship of love with me. And Mark 7, 7, and in vain they worship me, vain. Vanity for own purpose, for own greed, for own tradition, not for love. Teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. The doctrines and commandments of men, not God. The word of God is holy and true. The word of God is a living, breathing document. It is always, it is always there with us. It is literal. It is literally Jesus, as it says in John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. So the word was before the beginning. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh, as we go on to see about in the Gospel of John, meaning that Jesus Christ is the living Word. He is the sword. He is our sustaining bread. He is our living water. Man, because of Satan, has gone in and changed the denomination and changed the doctrine of men. Some of the times you hear some of these knuckleheads say, XYZ about the Bible and you just scratch your head and think, well, where did they get that from? That's not in the Bible or that's completely out of context of what they're talking about. People are using man-made doctrine for their own ideology. They're using man-made doctrine for their own theology. This is not theology. This is a love relationship of heart. Jesus is again quoting Isaiah saying they do it in vain. And that is one of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. We think that is a vocabulary term. It's not, even though it's very disgusting to hear the Lord's name taken in that type of manner. It is ambassadorship. If you truly love him, the scripture says you will be born again. You'll be a new creation. You'll be bearing the fruit. A good tree will bear good fruit. So if you're born again, you're a new person. And where do you feed? What is, what is your growth? Is your spiritual growth is the living word of God. Paul tells us when we're babes in the spirit, when we've been born again, we're nourishing on milk and we get stronger and stronger in the word. We get stronger in knowing his spirit. But if you want to get to know the most high God through his son, Jesus Christ, you've got to get in the word of God. And it's no coincidence. Again, rabbis believe coincidence is, a, is not a kosher word here on the Shabbat. That 10% of the church in America, only 10% of the church, put this in perspective, only 10% of the Church of America reads the Bible. And only 10% of American church truly believes the literal infallible Word of God. And over and over, the more you read the Scripture, the more you see it's literal. And so literal that it keeps peeling back and peeling back and peeling back to be more literal. When you first read the Word of God, you can see one sense of it. And then all of a sudden, He creates more senses out of it. But it's still literal, and it's still incredible, and it goes deeper and deeper and deeper the more you get sustained in His Word. And every time we see the, 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 the authors of the Word, Jesus Christ is the Word. He's quoting Isaiah word for word. Every single time somebody in the Bible is always quoting somebody else in the Bible word for word. They're not using it as an allegory. And we've, we've created man-made doctrine on one thing of the Bible, one verse of the Bible, to take a completely different stand against what God truly is saying. And that is blasphemy. We do not add to or take away the words of this book. We see this in Deuteronomy 4, and we see this in Revelation 22. His warnings twice. Do not add to or take away the words of my book. Out of two witnesses, my word will be established. You want to know the Lord Most High, it's in His word. And it's no coincidence that it's my highly conjecture that only 10% because of the fact on the tithe will be raptured in the Harpazo. There'll be many so-called Christians left behind. Why? Because they didn't truly love them. 
If only if 90% of the church in America is not reading the word of God, can you truly say that you love him? You truly love him with all your heart, your soul, and your mind? You're going through the people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Well, I don't need to read the Bible to love the Lord. Yes, you do, because that's him. If you want to get to know somebody and you want to love them and give them your heart, your soul, and your mind, as the number one commandment says, how do you get to know them? And they'd be like married to your spouse and say, you know what? Well, you know, I send her flowers every Valentine's Day. That's good enough. That's not love. That's an activity. That's not love. Love is giving your heart and your soul and getting to know that person. And in the case of Jesus Christ, trusting him with every ounce of your being. The church is under such persecution today, exactly the way Jesus said it would happen in the end days and the prophet said it would happen in the end days. And those who truly love him are staying strong to him because of the church of Philadelphia. You never denied my name. You never denied my word. Well, first of all, you got to know his word, not to deny his word. So that's a key right there, pun intended, the key of David, that that's for the Harpazo. That's the only church that Jesus Christ said would skip the time of Jacob's trouble, the time of the tribulation like the world has never seen. Why? Because they loved him. They loved him with all their heart, their soul, and their mind. They were the elect. There's the ones that cannot be fooled. Why can't they be fooled? Because they know the word of God. The more you get in the word, the more he shares his glory with you. He loves you so much. He's going to show you things outside of time and space. He's going to show you what tomorrow is going to be before it is. But he also gives you loving promise and he's building you up every day. People ask all the time, man, I wish God would talk to me like he talks to you. Well, there's two ways to go about that. One, give your heart, your soul, and your mind with the Lord, which, which it takes time. Or you can be a goat, like I was a goat. I was a goat and I was stubborn and finally he took me through trials and tribulations that I wouldn't wish on anybody, anybody. And finally I gave up self and humbled myself and asked for him to come in and be the complete Kairos of my life. And then, that's just the start. Then you have to get to know him. People say, well, how, how, how did you get to know him? Because I'm in his word. I've been in his word as much as I possibly can. Yes, I, I got different circumstances than you do, but every single person can give the Lord most high at least one hour a day. There's something in your life that's taking up an hour that's what's more important than the living Christ. It's more important than physically eating or drinking. That's how important the word of God is. You can find one hour in your day, whether it's on the way to work, whether it's on the way back to work, whether it's meditating before you go to bed with the earphones on and hearing the scripture, meditating in the Psalms, just listening for his word and his glory. Because the Lord speaks through his word. And when every time the Lord speaks to me, I know it's from him because A, I know his voice as the scripture said because he's told me so many times. But I know his word because he talks through his word. He will give me things that are based on scripture. And that's how you know it's from God. He will never go against his precepts and commandments. He won't tell me something that's not in his word. So how do I know it's in his word? I have to know his word. I have to get in his word. And the more I get in his word, the more he speaks to me, the more he shares with me, the more he lifts me up in these times of troubles, because I don't care who you are. You're going to go through times of faith. You're going to go through times of trouble. The enemy is going to attack you and you have to be strong. And the only way you can be strong in this world that's melting down it's through the, through, the, through the grace of the Most High God through His Son, Jesus Christ. And that's love. Love conquers all things. And He loves you so much that if you take that love relationship to Him and show Him and give Him your heart and say, I want to know you, I want to know your word, He changes you. He makes miraculous things. In those times you're down, when you're th thinking the world has really kicked you down, you can look at that word and it lifts you up. It lifts you up in love. It gives you that, that extra get up. And you're going to say, you know what, Satan, you're not going to beat me today. I have the God most high and his word is above his name. And he is the great I am that I am. And this is my weapon that no weapon ever formed will come against the word of God and come against me because I've given my life to the most high God through his son, Jesus Christ. And he walks with me and he talks with me along life's narrow way. Remember that as a kid. We pray that this little nugget of his glory and how important it is to know love and that love can only be through his word and knowing him and meditating on him and showing him the love and the glory because he wants to give you that love back 10 times, 100 times 
but it's based on the condition of your heart. How much time are you going to give him? How much do you really love him? If you really love him and you really want to give him time, then show it. Don't talk to talk. Walk to walk. Don't speak in vain. These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is from me. And in vain they worship me. Don't go to church for an hour and say, well, I did my job. That's vanity. That's just going, that's an activity. That's not love. Love is seeking. Love is finding. Love is holding up and having that, having him in your hands or him, you in his hands forever. And the only way you can do that is seeking his face with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. And he knows if you're being true or not. And if you go to him with an open heart, he changes your life. He changes your life and he walks with you and he talks with you along life's narrow way. We pray that this has been a blessing to you. And may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob reach you today in the word. Pick up the Bible and know his word today. Don't put off to tomorrow because Satan's worst enemy is that Bible. Because truth is only truth in this world of fake, fake, fake is in the word of God. May God bless each and every one of you and your families. God bless you.